Hey everyone, and welcome to season two of Death in Cambodia, Life in America, a podcast where I sit down with my father, Robert Chow, a survivor of one of the biggest genocides in modern history, the Khmer Rouge. He escaped to America with 10 bucks in his pocket and built a distributing company, one of the largest donut distributors in the U.S. How exactly did a poor, starving boy from Cambodia build an empire and achieve his American dream? I'm Dorothy, his daughter, and your host for today's episode. Let's dive in. Hello and good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Death in Cambodia, Life in America, Season 2. I'm so excited to say that because it's it's been a long time coming. Um, so I'm here with Robert today, and last episode, we left off with Robert explaining that he was in what they call work study. Work study is basically... Um, kind of a program that they had at the time where you stay in school for pretty much all day and you would be doing your homework and working within the school at the same time. So he was doing that for a certain period of time. Robert, good morning, everybody. After about a year of doing work study, I think you kind of mentioned a little bit last time too in the last episode that there was another level of a college that you went to. Yeah, I think, study, you know, that's, right? they both, uh, they have two locations. Uh, uh, one is called PCC. That's a smaller one. I think there's a smaller uh, campus. And the other one called Sylvania. That's a bigger campus. And everybody, most of the refugees at the time were shooting for going towards four-year college or not, not really? Not really. In my group, um, I met a lot of, uh, you know, refugee, but most of this is from Vietnam, mm. not too many from Cambodia. I think most of the Cambodian refugee my age at that time was to try to, you know, get a job right away mm-hmm. and, and work. So uh, me, it probably just a few people that stay in two-year program maybe only two or three people. Why do you think that you wanted to to uh, stay in school or versus everybody else wanting to get a job? Uh, I realized when I came to the United States, like I mentioned earlier, I got a job, right, not right away, but in Jeffco. Mm-hmm. I had a tough time. Uh, even from the first day that I stepped to into Bill Hoffman's house, right. it's just hard to to express, to com- to communicate. So if I, I realize this is a very important in my life, I I'm still young. I think this is the first first goal I want to achieve. And at that time too, they were going to be paying Daily. for your education anyway so why not take advantage right yeah that's have too i think you know because i uh, i think the state that have quite a bit on the education for the people that really want to go to school right to get education mm-hmm. so uh yeah it helped because i don't have to to go to work uh outside of the uh, school and i think you know then uh, after one year uh, I know a little bit of English. I can, you know, communicate with people and then uh, uh, quite a bit. Uh, not the big word, but uh, simple daily life. Simple daily it, life, yeah. And so uh, I made uh, a few friends. Was your idea at that time, like, I'm going to get a degree going to this school? Or was it more just like, I'm going to continue until I just improve my English better? <laughs> No, I think, you know, I think every single one, refugee, that's include me, the whole purpose is to learn the language and get a good job mm-hmm. and get a good pay mm-hmm. because uh, nobody's going to hire you if you, 
if you can't communicate, if you don't speak English, mm-hmm. it's a, it's hard. The only job that you get is a janitor, or the job that not require much language. Did you feel like learning English was hard? It was tough. Uh, were there parts of English that you thought were like really weird in the beginning, or I don't know what was that language learning process like? Oh yeah, I, I, some things you know. Sometimes the sound of that English word, if you familiar in a Cambodian Cambodian language, it's sometimes that sound is turned to be a really horrible uh, meaning. <laughs> and yeah, uh, 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 am I really uh, supposed to say this? Is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have uh, an example? You say good morning, everybody. When you go to a donut shop yeah. today, they say good morning, and then after they get the donut, they say, "Have a good day," right? Mm-hmm. And then a lot of people said, "Hey, good day, have a good day, have a good day." That means tear your butt <laughs> and sew it back. <laughs> and that's what it means. So I still uh, uh, a lot of people that still make a joke out of that and. It was it was hard. It was tough, but uh, didn't really bother me because that's what my goal. I gonna I gonna try my best to learn the language. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A few of my friend, he's working for Boeing now. We de- were decide at that time. and said, "Well, I think we are probably gonna go with the uh, something that." Use a lot of math, not English. So we right now, yeah. So I think five five of us decide to go to uh, our uh, machine technology. So, so what what that program teaching you to run a machine shop, a machine, big machine called uh, CNC. It's a automatic program. You have to write program feed into the machine. And then the machine will do the job for you mm. at all kinds of uh, projects. You, you can make any kind. So what we were talking is say, hey, after we graduate this two year, you know, a uh, uh, program, and then we can go to work for Boeing. That's a big company. And that's, that's a huge, huge company. Huge company. Yeah. yeah, that's what we all focus on. Yeah, we we, we had fun. So at this point in your life, like. You know, what's so interesting is now you probably are learning more about the American culture. You've been around for probably four years now, four or five years. You're making friends. You're living in this new world. Eating hamburgers. Eating hamburgers. Fried chicken. Now it's not so weird to you anymore. Now it's getting a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like it. You kind of like it. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 What did you learn about? Um, life and youth and American culture at that time. American give every single one opportunity what you want become to to be what you you know. So this is this is this is great. This is how I see. I learned quite a bit. Uh, we made friend with the uh, American people. The and so we ask, you know, we ask all kinds of questions. So that's how we learn. And then um, they were helping us and explain to us, this is, uh, this is America, you know. You say whatever you want to say and you do what you, 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 you want to become to be and just, just do it. And that's very different from Cambodian culture. It's completely different. You cannot just say what you want to say. You gotta, you gotta hold. You, they tell you what to say. Another word, just like the uh, when you raise the kid, it's the same thing. Look at all the Cambodian my generation. I said, hey, you, 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 you need, to, you, you have to do this. You have to do that. When you sit down on the table eating right, you cannot talk. You cannot, you know, do this. You, you cannot have to finish do your that. food. Yeah. You have to finish your food and all of that. Just a simple, small, simple thing. They just force you to do things. That's the culture. America, you do whatever you 
you want to do. You want to do. That's a big difference. Huge difference. Yes. Did that come to a shock to you? Well, uh, yes and no, because I was so independent when I was young. Mm-hmm. It probably a little bit different from the other people, but for me, no, because uh, I was independent. I never lived with with the parent when I was four, three or four. You've always been the kind of person that did what you wanted anyway. Anyway, and then... So, you know, a lot of people, when they think about their teenage years, that's when you really start making a lot of friends, learning about friendships and stuff like that. But you didn't have that experience because your teenage years was in the Khmer Rouge. So... Yes. Yeah. Yes. My teenage life, it just survive. Right. And, you know, how to make fire, how to chase the rat, how to catch the fish, mm-hmm. you know, for that day and how to, you know, Not all of this stuff. To, yes. Not get killed. Not yeah. get killed and shut up your mouth and keep continue working. Right. It's day and night from where I was in America. Free. I mean, you, you got freedom. You got to say whatever. But it take it took me a while, not just like so wow, you know, because you already not get used to, but you already your brain is already trained from the Camaro, you know, your brain is still is still stuck in that you know uh, ch- chamber, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then you just automatic say, oh, I might get killed, I might get, but here it's not a mess, but sometimes your mind is still, it's still your brain, your mind, it's still sometimes you. In that moment, I said, oh, you know, it just, just shocked. You know, I said, oh, I might get killed. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that that's something that a lot of people who experience, they go through such a negative traumatic experience and then they come to America. They still have what they call PTSD, mm-hmm. which is a post-traumatic stress disorder, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so it's like the effects of what happened to you before still kind of you feel the effects of it even after you try to build your new life yes um it 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 it, it does you know it it it, it took me for a while mm-hmm. and then uh, to uh, to get back to i mean i don't know it's called normal but at least improving every year because you made friends you mm-hmm. talk you you went to school and then keep your minds busy right. and you know homework and work study and all of that and then uh, you have uh you have goal now you have a goal to achieve you know for your future then i think your your mind it's keeping focus and on that so and it helped mm-hmm. it helped a lot after after three years, I believe, two to three years. So it, it kind of like gone, gone away for. You kept yourself busy enough that you just didn't oh, yeah. feel it as much anymore. Yeah, because I think I, 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 I didn't have work study when I moved to uh, Slovenia. Mm-hmm. But then uh, we, all, we all got a job after school. Uh, at that time, I had transportation. I bought the car. Right. So uh, 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 my job was the uh, uh, dishwasher. Dishwasher. And my friend, uh, his name Bill. He still live in Oregon now. He own a restaurant now, but at the time, I think he was a, a assistant cook, just mm. prep the uh, meat, the veggie. For the for the chef, I see. So I think they need a uh, dishwasher. So he he brought me in. So do you remember how much you got paid for that job? I believe it's uh, three, probably around three twenty five to three thirty five. But we were happy. We were happy. <laughs> that's and more. Is that more? Is that more than the janitor job? Uh, it's a little bit. A little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more. But I think, you know, they gave you a start from, uh, from five. You came in at five o'clock, get out from school. Uh, it was downtown, uh, Portland downtown. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, we came in and and I just started watching the air was so busy and then and then we worked until 12, 12, 11, 12 at night. This is, this is crazy. So, I mean, just within the four or five years, you have gone from berry picking to working in Jeffco and then also working as a janitor in school. And then now you're a dishwasher. So many different jobs that you were kind of doing within this time frame. After Sylvania and at this time, how long did you stay in that college? And work at the same time for two years. For two years, because okay. it's a two-year program, and then we completed. So we were so exciting and mm-hmm. try a lot of people's already. You know, before I think the last semester, right before we graduate, we already planned. Somebody saw moved to Los Angeles, and people said they already got a job. It's in Portland, Oregon, you know, and all of that. So it was so exciting. I said, at least we start at $7. Oh, wow. And then you get their job. Wow, you know, it's yeah. not going to be three twenty-five, three fifty, seven dollars $7. That's a lot of money. Some people even get the job at $10 an hour at wow. that time. Yeah. So we were so exciting and, and happy and said, hey, I mean, you know, now we're going to face a real life. Graduation. Graduation. Uh, we were all single at that time. So mm-hmm. now when we graduate, uh, you know, see how that picture, you know, we were so, so exciting, so proud, you know, and they, they call your name, you know, the, the graduation. Yeah. Yeah. You wear that black hat gown. and gown. Yeah. Wow, it's just like, way, I'm graduate from college. In America. In America. Oh, wow. What degree do you got? We call it AA degree. <laughs> I don't know what that is, ARC uh, Association or something that, you know. Right. Yeah. How did that make you feel? It's not an alcoholics uh, association degree. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did that make you feel? It feel great. It feel proud. Was that probably the first kind of achievement you felt like you had in America? Yes. Yes. No. Uh, I was so happy. I was so proud. I'm ready to go out there and rock and roll. What about Mama and Yeye? They probably were happy for you too. I told them, I'm going to hit, I'm going to go to a big town. I'm not going to stay here. I'm still single. I want to go to Los Angeles. That's what I told them. He said, no, 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 you stay here. I said, no, I'm 20 at that time. Maybe I'm 21, 22. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to go to a big town so I can learn more. I can learn more. And I want want to to try it. Where Uh, did you ever get the idea of L.A.? How did you learn about the city of L.A. to begin uh, with? My uncle came. I never saw my uncle. Scene we left, uh, that scene Kamaru took over. So um, I thought the plan, though, was that you were going to finish your AA degree and then you guys were going to apply for a Boeing position. We did. We all did. You know, we, we, we all did apply for Boeing. So uh, it was exciting and all that. But, you know, uh, after, uh, after a month, you know, we got all, all rejected. <laughs> and then was uh, and then we just sit there and look at each other and said, "Oh wow!" And then uh, then we decide to uh, to move to Los Angeles. All of us just said, let's go to Los Angeles because Los Angeles uh, it's a lot of company, a lot of big company that make part, make car part, uh, require machine shop mm. work. But the last time I saw my uncle uh, before the Khmer Rouge took over Cambodia, and after then they had. No contact, you know, we don't know he's still alive or dead or alive. But I, uh, we found out from my dad, older sister, live in Los Angeles. So, mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And so he, after the, which you had no idea, but after the refugee camps, he went, you guys went directly to Portland. He went directly to uh, Santa Ana. Santa Ana, I see. Okay. Okay. So. Wow. So you told Yeah Yeah and Mama that you want to move to LA. Yeah. I said, I'm go to LA. And then they they 
not too happy at all. He said, no, no, you stay here, find a job, and we all going to stay here. We're not going to move to Los Angeles. I said, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll do. Give me just one year. If I'm not going to make it over there, I'll come back. Because, you know, I, I want to go over there because I couldn't get a job here. Boeing reject everybody. So we, we all, we all going to decide to go try in L.A. So we did. I think, you know, at that time. Uh, uh, Mama and Yeah, yeah we're going to stay in Portland. In Portland. Yes. Without the rest of the family. Well, yes. Mm -hmm. Stay in okay. Portland. Yes. How did you get to LA? What did you drive there? I drive there. I remember, you know, we bought because uh, I bought, uh, I saved money uh, during school and plus pick up strawberry. Right. And with Mama Yeah Yeah's help, uh, <clears throat> we saved quite a bit. We saved about maybe $6,000, $6,000. Yeah. Uh, uh, close to 65 and remember the clear reason why because I told them I need one car small car so I bought a blue Toyota Corolla stick shift because that's cheap mm. at that time only 5000 close to $6,000 brand new wow. stick shift yeah Toyota Corolla blue color and then yeah help Twenty dollar in my pocket. That's all I have. Twenty dollars because that's all I have left. Cash. So I hope that twenty dollars uh, can have enough gas to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. 